In this video, I'd like to talk about the inverse of the table join, and that's the spatial join. I'm just going to give you a very little bit about it here. I'm going to go over this one rather quickly. But since we are talking about vector data, it probably isn't going to surprise you that we can not only execute joins based on attributes with a table join, as we've been talking about, but we can also execute joins based on geometry, and that's with a spatial join although a spatial join is a little bit different in concept from the table joins. One of the things that spatial joins are excellent for is summarizing feature information based on location. It depends on information uh, in the attribute tables, or it appends information in the attribute tables based on location. So for instance, what if you're in a situation where you want to know um, how many fire hydrants are in each particular voting district within a city. So you have a polygon file of all of the districts and you have a point file of all of the fire hydrants, but you certainly don't want to count them by hand. You'd much rather have a computer do this for us. So a spatial join is how you would do this. If you want to know any kind of summary information of data sets, including sums, averages, maximums, or minimums, based on attribute information and their location, then the spatial join is the procedure that you're going to use in order to get at this information. So being able to count the number of, say, fire hydrants in voting districts or find out which voting district has the most uh, or the least or other information like that. So this functionality, the spatial join tool, can be very handy to have in many different situations. It, it seems to be uh, a situation that comes up very frequently, that you need something counted, you need to have something summarized based on location. How do you do that? go to spatial join. It'll populate the attribute table for you of one of your data files based on summary information based on location of some other file. Spatial joins can also help you move attribute information from one data file to another based on location. So for instance if you did have the hydrant GIS data file and then also the a data file about all the voting districts and you didn't have in the attribute table of the fire hydrants which voting district it was in and you would like to have that information appended to each one of the fire hydrant features then a spatial join would look at which particular district each particular fire hydrant is sitting in and then you could have that information appended to the attribute table. As another example let's say that you had an area data file which tells you the area of responsibility for each one of the fire departments in the city so a fire department's here and then here's the area over which it's responsible for and then if you had another point file or had a point GIS file which showed where all the fires had been in the city say over the last year and you wanted to know which a fire department had been responsible for that particular file, uh, that particular fire, then you could append that information to the fire, fire data file by executing a spatial join. So you could have each one, have the computer look at each one of those fires, look and see which particular department's area of responsibility that it was in, and then append that information to the attribute table. Um, likewise, you could uh, also run the join so that it would summarize uh, which fires had occurred within uh, each particular uh, districts or which particular fire department's area of responsibility. You could total up the number of fires in each particular area of responsibility and add that information to the attribute tables. So there's a lot of times that, that you, people seem to want to be able to do this and they don't want to do it by hand. Or actually sometimes I often see people trying to do it by hand because they don't know that spatial joins exist and can help with summarizing information, tallying information based on location, or moving attribute information based on location. If you need to do something like that, then that is all spatial join. Very handy to get to know. Okay, well, so in the next video, we're going to begin looking at the basic geoprocessing tools, which are an extremely central part of the Vector GIS toolkit, and uh, will begin to really round us out and give us a tremendous amount of ability to solve problems and answer questions. So I'll see you in the next video.